shaped um, card base. A s there are several uh, videos of this online, but I'm just going to show you how to make the silhouette portion of it so you can save the card base and you don't have to cut it by hand every time you want to make it. And the final card looks like this. You guys have, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you, everyone has seen this card before, but I'm just going to show you how to make the base. So you can save it and you can cut two, two or three at a time if you need to on your machine in a hurry. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a rectangle. Now, I'm actually making this card now because my husband just sprung this on me. He said I need a Christmas card. And it's for someone who's never gotten a handmade, who's never gotten a store-bought card from us. So I felt like I had to hurry up and throw something together with the little bit of Christmas paper I had left. So, but anyways, I have my rectangle drawn here on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and select it, and I'm going to go up to the scale window. Looks like three boxes together, and I'm going to change the size of it to the, a standard size card. So five and a half by four and a quarter. And this is not the right way, and I always do this. I get the width and the height backwards for some reason. So I'm just going to go up to the rotate window, and I'm going to tell it to rotate 90 degrees. Not a big deal. And I'm going to make one more of this box. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to copy, and then I'm going to hit paste. So it gives me another square. Now I could have went and drew a square and went back to scale, but it's just easier this way. Now I'm going to draw, or actually I'm not going to draw, I'm going to cut this in half diagonally to make my two flaps. Now, you can do this in the regular version of Silhouette Studio. I'm using the designer edition, but I will admit that the regular version of Silhouette Studio, the knife tool is not very forgiving. It's not very user-friendly, and it doesn't always work the way you think it should work. So with that said, I'm going to put this file on my blog for you guys to download if you want it, if you don't have the designer edition of Silhouette Studio. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this in half on the diagonal. And you can see it made two different pieces. Piece one right here and piece two over here. All right, so I'm gonna zoom back out. And I'm gonna take my pieces, and I'm gonna weld them on here because these are gonna be my flaps that fold over. So there's piece one here, but this piece, as you can see, is not the right direction. This would make an interesting card front, but this is not what I'm going for. So I'm going to take this piece and select it, and I'm going to go up here to my replicate window, and I'm going to tell it to mirror below, so it gives me a, a flipped over image of what I have. So now I have a mirror image below. I'm going to select my original and just hit delete or backspace on my keyboard to get rid of it. So now I have the matching mirror piece to go here. Now you could stop here and just weld this together and you'd have your card base. But I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to make my interior layers because I'm lazy and I'd rather have it all in my silhouette and I can just cut it out. So I'm going to highlight this triangle. I'm going to go up to the offset window and I'm going to click internal offset so it makes an inside piece, like a reverse shadow. And I'm just going to change the offset distance so it's a little smaller. And then I'm going to click off of it and click back in again and click internal offset so I get another one because I want two of these for this particular card. So I take this and I'm going to drag it away and I'm going to take this one and drag it away. I need two more of these pieces to do this side but I can just mirror these two. I don't have to create another one. So with that said I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to make sure these are completely off. Now, I zoom in really tightly when I'm working in Silhouette Studio so I can see how the pieces are lining up. So if you don't get this top part lined up perfectly, you get like some funky jagged edges. That's why you see me zoom in and out so much when I'm creating something. But anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and go in and overlap these two triangular pieces. So there, it looks like they are completely... Uh, overlapping on one side. I'm going to take both pieces and highlight them so they're all selected and I can either right click on my mouse and go to weld or I can go up to this modify window. 
Okay, so here's my entire card base. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do, and this is something new that I don't think I've shown in any of my videos before, is I'm going to create score lines. Now, usually I delete score lines, but since I'll probably, I, since I'll have the option of taking the score lines away in the future if I don't want them, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in. So I'm gonna zoom in again just a little bit. Well, that was a lot, but I'm gonna zoom in so I can see the top part of my shape and you can see it's a little off right there but that's okay uh, the machine is it's good but it's not that good it's not gonna be able to cut that um, watch me eat my words later but anyways I'm gonna select the draw line tool and I'm gonna go up here and start here and go down and draw a straight line but I'm not gonna overlap and you can see this number where it says 5 now it says 20 now it says 75 down here at the bottom. I want that to be zero because zero means my line is straight. So now my line is straight. So I'm going to let go and now I have just a line here. Now what's important is that you make sure that this line is not actually touching either side because we don't want this to cut. We just want a score line. Now if I leave it like this, it's going to cut straight through the cardstock. That's not what I want. I want a score line. So I'm going to go up to the top right hand corner and select my open the line style window. And here, this is the lines, the various line styles we can cut with. The one we normally use is a solid one because this is what cuts out our shapes. But you can also choose to have lines that are perforated or scored. So I'm going to go to this largest one down here. So it just cuts little nicks in a place to score so it's easier for me to fold. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now I could go through the process and draw another line straight down, but it's just quicker, quicker for me to right click, hit copy, right click again and hit paste and just drag it over. Because it's going to be straight and as long as I have it lined up with that top little notch right there, it should be fine. So I'm going to zoom out and you can see here that my edges are not perfect. And I could go in with a knife tool and fix that, but it's really not that important because when I fold it, you're not going to be able to tell. And you'll be able to, and you can see that on the final project, you can't really tell. So I'm going to zoom back out and now you can see my final shape. Now, it doesn't all fit on the mat, even on the 12 by 12 Cameo mat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, going to angle it. But before I do that, I'm going to highlight the entire sh image. Now, you're probably thinking this is already one image, we welded it together, but these lines are not attached. And if I grab this triangle and I move it, it'll move without taking the lines with it. So I'm just going to hit Command-Z or Control-Z, depending on what system you're using, and move it back. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to right-click on my image, and I'm going to hit Group. And that's just going to put everything together so I can move it in unison. Now I can highlight it, and I can angle it so it will fit on my mat. And the way it is right now, I can fit two of these. So if I go up to my replicate window and I tell it to mirror right, you'll see it swung way out, but I can rotate this around and fit another one on the mat, like so. So you can get two of them out of a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. So this is an old card design. You could do this just using eight and a half by 11 and cutting it out by hand. But like I said, I'm lazy. I'd rather have my machine do it and have it stored and I can cut multiple multiples at once. Um, so with that said, I'm going to move on to the layering pieces. Now this piece fits inside, inside this piece. You can do as many of these layers as you want. Uh, I just happen to have chosen two. But I need one for each side. So what I'm going to do is this, is an, this will actually fit on the left hand side when it's folded over. Now I need the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is select my shape. I'm going to say duplicate right. Oh, excuse me. I lied. So I'm going to hit control Z. I'm going to say mirror right because I need the reverse. Then I'm going to select this shape again and I'm going to say mirror right so I get the other two. Now, I'm not going to be able to fit this with this or knowing myself, I'll probably want to cut this out of um, six by six paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit group. So that way this is all one big image so I can select it and in this instance now I'm just gonna hit cut because I'm gonna take it away I'm gonna go to file new so I get a new tab down here and I'll hit paste now I have these four triangles here and I can go back and ungroup them 
as necessary and then I can configure them on my paper to cut however I need them to. So if I need to, I can angle these by grabbing the green handle and moving them over into a corner. So if I wanted to cut this out of six by six paper, I could fit both of them here and then I could move this one and fit this one in the top um, side on the other side. So since that's exactly what I need to do, I'm gonna go ahead and tweak these a little bit. Okay, so I can tell based off my crosshairs and I can see where it's grayed out right here. This would fit on a six by six sheet of paper and this as well would fit on a six by six. And I can tell by the grayed out section here on the ruler. Now, like I said before, I'm using the designer edition of Silhouette Studio. So I have the crosshairs and the ruler built in and I have a reading on the X, Y axis. So I can see these things. Now, if you don't, if you're not using the designer edition, all you have to do is go to, um, your screen that, gosh, where is it? Oh my gosh. This is the first time I've ever like clicked around and so it's like, okay, I went straight here and didn't even see it. Um, anyways, if you're using a regular version of Silhouette Studio and you don't have these rulers on the side and you need to see the grid mat, just go to the page option here. It's a red box and then you can say reveal carrier sheet. You can see where your pieces are going to end up on your mat. Um, but anyways, so I have my pieces. I'm going to cut them out and assemble my card. Okay, so I have my pieces cut out, and I'm just going to go ahead and quickly assemble this. I've got some ribbon here. Not the, well, it's not a, the best match in the world, but it'll work. And this little die cut is from the, um, the little cards that came with it, and I thought it was funny because this fits the person we're giving it to perfectly. And it says, Santa Claus had the right idea, visit people once a year. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I'm going to quickly put this together.